I was a battalion scout and point man, and any of you guys are veterans, you know what the hell a point man means. The life expectancy is about 30 minutes or so, something like that. And uh, I was in a war history writing class with about 10 Vietnam guys, and I told them that I was a point man and scout. They says, oh no, you weren't. And I says, God damn it, yes I was. And they says, nah, you weren't. If you were, you'd be dead. So here I am, mean as hell, and so forth. <clears throat> How many of you read the story in the Oregonian last week about the DEA trying to get hold of your patient's charts? How many of you raise your hands? You read that? Well, let me tell you, the DEA skunks and the local cops are all going crazy because you bastards have permits to use marijuana. And you have permits to grow it, and you have permits to carry it, and you have permits to give it to somebody else, and all that kind of stuff. And there are 15,000 of you guys with permits right now. 15,000 in Oregon. And about 7,000 uh, caregiver growers. So that makes about 22,000 people who have the permits right now. Now, this is, this is small potatoes because in California, there are over 300,000 people who have permits. Well, California, I understand, is a little bit larger than uh, Oregon. You, you don't mind if I say Oregon, do you? Oregon. You know? Well, I lived this east of the Mississippi for about 20 years or so. And back there, I was from Oregon. And that used to grate on my nerves. And so I finally figured out, thank God they've never been out here. Because if they ever say that in the state of Oregon, they'd get somebody hit them over the head with a brick. <laughs> yeah! Thank you, sir or madam. Uh, when the board uh, took away my license in November three years ago, um, I was really disgusted with this because they thought that they were punishing me. They were not punishing me, they were, they were punishing my 4,000 patients. And, and I, I, I get the idea that they were trying to stop the medical marijuana program. But as most of you know, the THC Foundation Clinic is probably seeing about 200 patients a week. And we're increasing the number of patients all the time. Um, there are 2,200 doctors in Oregon now who are signing applications, 2,200 of them. And uh, some of you know, many of you don't know, I'm actually an osteopathic doctor. And believe it or not, there are 200 osteopathic doctors who are signing these applications. And I thought I was the only one and uh, because I thought I was the only one, I was a real bad person. And that's one of the reasons why I'm wearing this cute thing right here. That I'm, I'm the most dangerous man in Oregon because it said so in the Oregonian. We love you. We love you, Dr. Buck. That, that reminds me, thank you very much. That reminds me of several years ago uh, on our television program, a, a man phoned up and wanted to know if his medical condition would permit him to get a a permit and so forth and and so he told me what his medical condition was and I says hell yes I says you're eligible come on to the office and he says Dr. Levesque I'd like to have a relationship with you and I said if you don't mind please don't say that on television so uh, I hope you, you you two guys don't want to have a relationship with me because I I gave all that stuff up I, I I was a Boy Scout till I was 14, and then I became a Girl Scout. Um, I have just uh, started uh, writing articles about medical marijuana. The website is called Salem-News.com, and I try to write at least one article a week about all the sundry aspects of medical marijuana 
What we're concentrating on right now is post-traumatic stress disorder. How many vets I got in the office here? You poor dumb bastards. <laughs> Don't volunteer for shit. That's all I have to say. <laughs> At any rate, even the Veterans Administration admits that they are failing to take care of post-traumatic stress patients. Um, which, which is a real surprise because I was in the VA hospital about 50 years ago and they told my mother on three occasions that uh, we don't believe your son's going to make it. And I fooled them and I survived. And then about two years later, <clears throat> I met one of my doctors in the hallway of the medical school and he looks me up and down and he says, uh, you're Levesque, aren't you? And I said, yeah, I'm a Levesque. He says, well, are you a janitor here? And I says, no, I'm a PhD candidate. And he says, really? I says, what do you mean really? He says, we never thought you'd be normal again. So if any of you think that I'm normal, you're crazier than hell. <coughs> now, does it, do any of you have any questions of any something or other? I have, I have become one of the world's authorities on medical marijuana, so ask me anything. How do I qualify for, to get a card? Oh, okay. Uh, how, how, how bashful are you? Come up here and talk to me. Come on, get up here. Yay! What about uh, medical marijuana and ADHD? Does in, in, in what? Uh, marijuana used for ADHD? Oh, very, actually, hey, that's a very good question. In fact, the matter is, uh, over the, uh, this past week, I wrote uh, two articles about ADD and ADHD, <clears throat> and the uh, California doctors. <laughs> oh, my wife could run by whose mouth? My mouth. Oh, okay. The doctors in California, and as far as I know, there are about 70 doctors in California who are writing these permits. But uh, just like I say, they have written over 300,000 by now. And the DEA and the local cops are going crazy down there because, well, what the hell, you're just a bunch of potheads and you don't deserve even the time of day. So ADD and ADHD are good. Now, I was invited uh, uh, back to a, to a subcommittee at Congress uh, three years ago uh, by Representative Souder from Indi Indiana. And he represented um, Eli Lilly and Company in Indianapolis, who had just developed a new ADD, ADHD drug. And so what uh, Souter wanted to do was to quash the medical marijuana in the United States completely. And so uh, I was invited back there and I was told by the Marijuana Policy Project that they were going to skin me alive. So I decided not to go. But the strain, now the, it, the Eli Lilly company figured that the ADD drug would bring in a billion dollars a year. But after it was released and used for about six months, they found out it didn't work. Now this is really crazy because marijuana does work for kids and, and they don't smoke, but they eat it in cookies. How many of you are cookie eaters? How many of you are smokers? I don't know why the hell I asked that. <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't. Well, that's not exactly true. About six years ago, my youngest son gave me a loaded bomb for Christmas and he says, I'll dare you to light it up. Well, I think it was pretty bad grass or some goddamn thing. Probably Mexican mud, who knows, something like that. But anyway, I took a couple of hits off and I says, Jesus Christ, what, what's, what's so great about this stuff? He said, well, you're not taking enough of it. How many of you have heard that? How many of you ever been high? How many of you been high twice?
What'd you say? How about 37 years straight? How many guys have been high 37 years straight? <laughs> I think this is hilarious. <laughs> well, I will say, I will say that um, uh, when I became a graduate student at the medical school, the first thing the chairman says, Levac, go into the stock room and see if you can straighten it out. So I went into the stock room and the first thing that I found was a gallon jug of cannabis cough medicine. This was 13 years after it was declared illegal for anybody in the United States to have anything like that. And uh, I said, well, it's, it was made by Park Davis and Company, which is one of the largest in the world. And I poured myself a pint and I took it home and I tried it out and it works. And so I still have that pint someplace around my house and uh, I'll find it one of these days. But uh, that was the only time that I actually smoked marijuana at that time. But I, I have used the tincture and I've used the oil and they, they work fine for me. And uh, uh, how many of you ever had bad grass? Did you like it? Raise your hands if you enjoyed it. Didn't, didn't like it. Well, it's great that in uh, British Columbia they're growing some of the best grass in the world. <coughs> and uh, uh, some of the plants are being grown in the Portland area. You probably know that. How many of you know that? You know that? Very good. What do you want? This guy says he's going to cut my throat. So does anybody have any final question here to ask me? Don't get smart with me, fella. <laughs> Glad to be here. I'm going to turn around and give you all a very short, uh, very short picture of cannabis therapeutics. Take a look at it. Yeah. Isn't that more fun than it ought to be? Thank you very much. Do not smoke in the rain. <laughs>